it's not a good choice. It's not a bad choice. It is a choice that is neutral. The goodness and the badness is always in your context. If you are not someone who should be drinking, do not drink. If you're able to drink, enjoy it. If you're able to drink now and not able to drink later, then stop. If you need to take a break, take a break. That's on you. That's on you. Your life is in control. This substance does not control you. Neither does anyone's opinion about any substance. This, ice cream, whatever it is, do what is right for you. Why is my camera so on? Is second degree possession. Count one is second degree possession, 25 uh, grams or more of in or methane. Uh, this is in violation of Minnesota statute 152.022, subdivision two, print A, print one. The maximum sentence for that count is 25 years in prison and or a $500,000 fine. Count two is possession of ammunition uh, or any firearm with the user of controlled substances. This is a gross misdemeanor, so the maximum sentence is 364 days in the Kennewai County Jail and or a $3,000 fine. Count three, endangerment of a child uh, when present uh, with a sale or possession of a controlled substance. Again, a gross misdemeanor. Nick Riqueda has been charged, as you just heard. There are drug charges. Serious, very serious charges here, and then also firearm charges and child endangerment. We've seen some of the paperwork, and it was a mandatory reporter that had to bring this to light is what it is. You know, somebody like a teacher, or I don't know who it was exactly. I didn't look at the paperwork that closely enough. But a mandatory reporter uh, kind of brought this to light here. Tracy Beans. Uh, posted the document on X. Uh, man, this is tough. I haven't talked about Nick in a long time. I, it's been, I found out about Nick Ricada. I found out about him during the Rittenhouse trial. And that's, I didn't know who LawTube was. I didn't know who Nick was from, I didn't know him, literally didn't know who he was until the Rittenhouse trial. And that trial was, if you followed that during that trial, uh, I was working at home at the time and that just made the day go by. I listened to every, I listened to damn near every second of the Rittenhouse trial. Damn near. I mean, it's hours upon hours and I would, you know, have to take breaks or go and stuff. I'll pause it or I'd have my headphones in listening to Nick and then Nick brought in all of LawTube and they, we never seen legal coverage that good, that diverse, with like literal diversity thought. And then I like Nick. So then I started watching Nick's lives. And Nick is, if you were to do a Hall of Fame streamer, like a, a, a streamer, a YouTube streamer, or just an internet streamer's Hall of Fame, Nick Riqueda is in it. And I'm, I, I'm not talking about like the basketball Hall of Fame where you kind of let almost everybody in. I'm talking about really a strict hall of fame he'd be up there one of the greatest talents and streamers i've ever seen uh, you know part of the things you can look at for a streamer is do they create like a culture with their streaming what what is the culture the dude had i mean hundred thousands and yeah i think at some of his lives and these were the court ones he would have a hundred thousand in there but every night he would have ten thousand in there I mean, he was one of the highest, um, you know, super chat type. I mean, why? Because the dude was performing hours, hour upon hour upon hour with hot take, jokes, jokes, hot takes every single day. And it, and I'm looking at it, I'm like, how does a bra do that? I'd never seen anybody do that. 
I mean, Nick Fuentes is great. There's there's a lot of great streamers out there, but that's a hell of a grind. And the 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 ones that are great like that, Joe Rogan's a comedian. He's not even like on like that all the time on his show. And it was nonstop entertainment, minute, second after second after second. I'm like, how the hell? And I know he would sleep during the day and then be up during night. I'm like, damn, how the hell do these dudes do this? But he would always have that that drink with him. And it was clear. Obviously, everyone knew there was a problem, at least to that extent. Because he would do a live every night, and every night there would be the figurative bottle right there. But he never, even when I stayed for his whole lives, because his lives would get progressively more risky, risque, risque, and he would read the man manifesto from, um, I forget which incident that happened, and he would end his show every day with it. And then he had beef with, he had beef with Keffels. Then I kind of followed that and I kind of liked Keffels and I liked Nick, but Nick handled that well. And then he had, I don't know what happened with him and Eric July. And I started seeing him and that, and his vibe was just off. I wasn't thinking anything about these type of problems, but I was just like, you, you don't have to agree with Eric July or but the, like your your takes are off, your vibe is off. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. And then that's when I stopped. I just I didn't make a conscious decision to boycott it. I just stopped watching his lives. I was I wasn't interested anymore after that. It just changed. That's that's when it really changed for me. I'm like, what's going on? This is weird. Even if he in his prime or when I saw him in his prime. If he were to have had a disagreement or a different assessment on a lawsuit with somebody like Eric J Eric July, he wouldn't have handled it the same way, I don't think. I don't know who he's surrounded himself with. Obviously, his relationship, you, you got to work on your faith and relationship with, with God. I don't even know what his faith is. I don't even remember that bringing, being brought up. Then we found out this happened, and I was just like, I can't, I couldn't believe it. I, I couldn't, I, I'm like, I don't even recognize the dude from, it, it, when did the Eric July stuff happen? Was it a year ago or a year and a half? I mean, this happened. The video I started this with was less than a year apart. I just, I don't know him from Adam. I just, I've always admired somebody like him who's so smart and to be entertaining like that is just so difficult every night hours 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 what a talent i mean i, I kind of put it like luckily he's alive and i think he can rebound from this i don't know his personal stuff but i i just have a feeling he can rebound from this but it reminds me of a musician that it just falls into this the substance and it's hard and he has he has kids too man i'm just i'm just praying for him uh his family i'm hoping that they recover through this i think he can i think he can i'm, I'm hoping for a good story and i'm hoping that he comes back gets clean hopefully you know he does whatever he wants to do but i think that's probably what would be a great plan Get I hope he gets clean and then he can come back and watch, you know, fan videos like this, and maybe it'd be haunting, but but also funny because he he'll be in a much better place. If you're able to drink now and not able to drink later, then stop. That's on you. Your life is in control. This substance does not control you. Why is my camera so?
dangerous shadows. He's losing control. Gotta find a way out of this deep dark hole. It's time to wake up. Gotta reach for the light before this lifestyle kills him. He needs to fight. Middle MAGA.